Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now just continuing on with the Octane Blender tutorials, specifically focusing in on lights, and I want to expand a little bit further on this, and I'm going to recreate this image here. Believe it or not, it's one light. I'm using what we call an industry, or what gets called a gobo light. Now, that's gobo. I apologise for my Scottish accent there. And it basically means it goes before optics. Uh, they use it in theatre a lot. Basically, they put like a shield in front of the light and it blacks it out and you get this really nice effect. Now, this can be used for caustics. It could be used to create shadows, a window frame, whatever. And it's pretty easy to set up, to be honest. So let me just quickly jump into Blender Octane. And this is my node set up here, just to save you a little bit of time. Uh, we have the Gobo image. It goes into the distribution of a texture emission. And this goes into your diffuse material of your object which is our light in our case, and obviously I have a 3D transform node, so I can have a little bit more control over it. But that is pretty much it, it just goes into the distribution. Now when it comes to global lights, they're generally black and white. Uh, let me open up Photoshop. I made one very quickly. Now the best thing to do, if you want a little bit of fall off, you actually go down the greys to the white. So obviously white is light, and dark is dark. But I'll show you how to set this up, because there's a few tricks that you can use inside of Octane Blender. That just give you a little bit more control, if I'm honest. So let's quickly go back to this scene, and we'll just start everything from scratch, because when you do this, you actually might end up with, you might end up with a few problems. Uh, so we'll go into the render view. Everything should be dark. I do have an HDRI basically kind of giving a little bit of a kick light here. But I'm going to turn this quickly off just so we get a completely dark scene. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add, I'm going to go to light, and I'm going to add an, an octane area light. Doesn't necessarily need to be an area light, but it's the best one to use. Now there is plenty of resources when it comes to global lights. Uh, if you look on Gumroad for example, there's like a a 20 for free, uh, very good to be honest. They generally come in JPEG or TIFF format if I, my memory serves me correct. So we have a new light that is set up inside of Octane Blender. Now let's bring this in a little bit. Of course, I've already shown you how to do this. We need to add in an RGB image into the distribution node. So we can search for RGB. RGB image. And we can open up. Now I need to hide my stuff here for a second. And this is one I prepared earlier. And what I do here is I take the texture output and I put this into the distribution. Now one thing that you might find is the power's really low. So we can put the power up. And you'll notice that it kind of it doesn't really seem to be working correctly. It seems to be like a black circle in the middle here. And this is why I would use a projection node. Now I've been doing a lot of tutorials where I take the UV transform and then I plug it directly into the projection. You don't necessarily need to do this, you can keep it inside of the UV transform, it's, I think it's habit more than anything to be honest. But when it comes to projection, what are we looking for? Well, really we need to project via perspective. So if I use the perspective node and I go into the projection here, you can see that I can now have a little bit more control, I can rotate and stuff. Uh, generally what I'll do is I'll just grab this and I'll put this into the plane transformation as well. Uh, let me quickly reset these values and I'll show you some of the issues that you might run across. You'll notice that it's a little bit blurry compared to the image that I had. Now you're probably thinking, well maybe if I move this up I may get a little bit better. The scale doesn't necessarily work and if you can check around here where the birds are, it's really blurry. Now, one of the reasons for this is the scale of the light. Now you're probably thinking, well I can just grab the light, press S and I can scale it down. It doesn't necessarily work, it actually makes it darker. So what you need to do is you actually need to go to the light properties, come all the way up to here. And you can change the shape and stuff like this, but leave it on square for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this size down and you'll notice that it actually comes right into focus. And I actually have the size set as zero. <clears throat> one of these weird things to be honest. Uh, if you want to give it a little bit of blur, you can probably go up slightly, something like that. And that's you, you're pretty much set up. And because I have a transformation node, I obviously can rotate it, things like this. Uh, I can translate it as well if I want to give it a little bit, of, a little bit of this going on. So now what I can do is I can actually move the light up and down, stuff like this. One thing that you might notice here is it's been repeated. Uh, you might need that, you might have a building, you might want it to repeat, but I 
don't necessarily want that and what I'm going to do here is change the border mode of the texture and I'm just going to either clamp the value or just go to black colour because it's a black value and there we go, we only have one and we have this really nice light set up going on and obviously like any other light we can control the power uh, we can change the colour of the light for example you get this really nice kind of volumetric light going on so pretty much the exact same principle when it comes to lighting as well all you're doing is really making a mask for the light this can be anything go into google grab some silhouettes bash it together bob's your uncle and because this is an image you can actually run this as an image texture sequence so let's say for example you're in after effects and you want to have the leaves blown or something like this or a curtain in the wind well, you can run that as a film and you'll get this really nice, cheap effect. Anyway, do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take care.